In this video, we will be looking at ratios. Now, I want you to focus your attention on this clause of juice here. Let's say I want one part to be the concentrate, the juice concentrate, and I'm going to let the other, let's say maybe four parts, be water. This is what we call a ratio. I'm going to have one, two, four parts. So this would be the water, and that would be oh, the other way around. This would be the concentrate, the four parts would be the water. Right, now you can do different things with ratios. One of the first things we're going to look at is simplifying ratios. Now let's say I have here 16 to 20. This is the example I was given. In a class, I want 16 boys to 20 girls, just to kind of balance everything out. Right, now the question asked me to simplify, which is to make small. Very, how do you make something very small? You divide. Now we're going to be dividing by the HCF, the highest common factor, on both sides. That's how you simplify a ratio. What you do on the one side, you have to do on the other side. Now I have to divide the 16 and the 20 by an HCF, which is a number with no remainder. What can go into both 16 and 20? We know that 1 can go into it, but 2 can also, and 3 cannot. So I'm looking for the biggest number that can go into both numbers, and you'll see that it is 4. So I'm going to divide by the same number 4 on both sides. That is the HCF. And 16 divided by 4 is 4, 20 divided by 4 is 5. Now I always check um, whether I still need to simplify this new ratio to get a smaller one, but I see that there's nothing that can divide into 4 and 5. So they, they have no common factors, and 4 to 5 is then our simplest form. Okay, They could also ask you to find equivalent ratios. Now these are just ratios that are the same or equal. Okay, let's take an example like um, 25 to 2, and I want a ratio that's equal to that, but it looks different. What I'm going to do is I can multiply uh, by any number, any single number of my choice, but I just have to do it on both sides. Okay, so whatever number I choose to multiply with, it could be 1, 2, 3, or whatever. I just have to multiply with it on both sides. It could also be a big number like 100 or 1000. I choose to multiply by 3 on both sides. Then I get 75 here, 25 times 3. And on the other side, 2 times 3 is 6. Now note that I can also divide on both sides as long as I divide by the same number. However, there are no common factors of 25 and 2. So it has to be a common factor as well when you divide. Okay. Then now something else that they can ask, another type of question, they can say, um, divide something. Let's choose a number. Let's say we divide 2,600 in the ratio 3 to 4 to 9. When they ask you something like this, there are steps that you can follow. The first step is you will add all the numbers involved in the ratio. So I'm going to say 3 plus 4 plus 9 to get the total, and that is 16. Then I'm going to make a fraction. So all these numbers will now just be a fraction. So I'm going to have 3 over the total, 16. Then I'm going to have 4 over 16, and I'm going to put the 9 also over 16, because I want a fraction. Lastly, I will now multiply by the big number. Now, what I mean by the big number, in the beginning of the question, they gave you a big, large number, that's 2,600, and I actually have to find out what then is 3 over 16 of that big number. So I'm going to put 2,600 in here. Whenever I say of, it's actually times. Right, so that's why I multiply this. So just follow the steps every time, and you'll be fine. I'm going to multiply each fraction by 2,600, so I can see what I'm going to get there. And you'll see the answers are 487,5, 650, 1,462,5. And there we are. 
if you would now go and add all these numbers, you'll find that once again they give you that big 2600. Okay, finally, another question they can ask, they could say compare the ratios. So now, in an example, let me give you the ratio 5 to 3 or 6 to 4. You need to choose which ratio is the largest, let's say, for this example. Choose the largest ratio. Now also, steps that you can follow. You can write them as a fraction. And then just divide and get your answer. Two easy steps. I'm going to say 5 divided by 3. I'm going to put that in my calculator just like that. And I will get something like 1,67. Then I'll say 6 divided by 4 and I'll get 1,5. Now I can compare them and I can say, but this 5 over 3 is the largest ratio because it gives me 1.67 compared to 1.5. Okay. Now, note that there is another way that you could do this. Uh, let me show you the second method. And some teachers prefer using this method or when learners use this method. So here we have the two ratios again. Now write them as fractions again. This method also works well if you don't have a calculator nearby or if you're not allowed to use one. Then you cross multiply. So for the second method, you cross multiply. I'm going to say 5 times 4 gives me 20. 3 times 6, 18. And now it's simple. I just compare the 20 and the 18, the yellow numbers. Which one is bigger? Oh, the 20. Which tells me the same thing. This ratio is the larger ratio between the two. Alright, that's the end of this video. Remember to like, share, subscribe and become part of the Whiteboard SA team.